Welcome to this video from EPC Land. In today's session, we are going to talk about one of the most commonly used valves in the piping world, the gate valve. Let's begin by understanding what a gate valve actually is. A gate valve is a device used in pipelines to start or stop the flow of fluid. It uses a gate-like disc which moves up and down, cutting across the flow path to either allow fluid to pass or to stop it completely. It is called a gate valve because the disc works just like a gate or a barrier. When the gate is lifted, the fluid can pass freely. And when the gate is lowered, it blocks the flow entirely. One important point to remember is that gate valves are not meant for controlling or regulating flow. They are designed to be either fully open or fully closed. If you try to use them in a partially open position to control flow, the fast-moving fluid can cause damage to the disc and the seat inside the valve. This can also lead to vibration, noise and wear over time. So where are gate valves used? They are extremely common. In fact, gate valves are one of the most widely used valves in all types of process plants, whether it's oil and gas, chemical, power or water treatment facilities. Now let's talk about how the gate valve operates. Gate valves are linear motion valves. This means the gate moves in a straight line up to open the valve and down to close it. When fully open, the gate disc is completely out of the way, allowing fluid to flow with almost no resistance. That's why the pressure drop across a gate valve is very low when it is fully open. However, when you want to shut off the flow, the gate lowers down and makes full contact with the seat. To create a proper seal, the gate must make 360 degree surface contact with the seat inside the valve. This ensures a tight shutoff and prevents leakage. Now let's briefly look at the parts of a gate valve. The main part is the disc, which is also called the wedge. This wedge is the part that moves up and down to block or allow flow. There's also a stem which connects the hand wheel or actuator to the disc. Turning the hand wheel raises or lowers the stem, which in turn moves the disc. The seat is the surface where the disc rests when the valve is closed. The body holds everything together. And the bonnet is the cover on top of the valve where the stem moves in and out. These components work together to make gate valves simple, reliable and very effective for on-off control in pipelines. In summary, gate valves are used to start or stop flow, not to control it. They offer very low resistance when fully open, not suitable for throttling or flow regulation, common in almost every type of industrial plant, known for tight shutoff and simple design. That brings us to the end of this explanation on gate valves. In the next video, we'll dive into the different types of gate valves. So, stay tuned. If you found this explanation helpful and want to learn more about piping systems and valves, don't forget to subscribe to our EPC Land YouTube channel. We have detailed courses on piping engineering with over 150 hours of recorded content, specially designed for students, professionals, and industry learners. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Welcome to this video on types of gate valves brought to you by EPC Land. In our earlier video, we understood what a gate valve is and how it works. Now, let us take a deeper look at the different types of gate valves based on three main classifications. Let's begin with the first classification, types of disc. Gate valves can have different types of disc or wedge inside them. The most common types are solid taper wedge. This is the simplest and most widely used design. The solid wedge is strong and can be installed in any position. It works well with almost all types of fluids, including turbulent flow. However, the solid wedge cannot adjust itself if the valve seat becomes slightly misaligned due to thermal expansion or external forces from the piping. This makes it more prone to leakage. Also, in high temperature applications, a solid wedge can experience thermal locking. That means the disc may get stuck between the seats as the metal expands due to heat. Flexible wedge. This is also a one-piece disc but has a groove or cut around its edge. The cut allows the disc to flex slightly. This helps the valve seat better and improves tightness. 
Flexible wedges are especially useful in steam systems. When steam causes the pipeline to expand due to heat, the flexible wedge adjusts itself, preventing thermal binding. However, one downside is that fluids can collect in the groove, which may lead to corrosion over time. Split wedge or parallel discs. This design uses two separate pieces instead of a single solid wedge. The two parts are held together by special mechanism. This split design allows the disc to adjust itself to the valve seats even if one side is slightly misaligned. There is another version called the parallel disc, which uses springs to keep the discs pressed against the seats. Split wedge valves are especially good for handling gases and liquids that operate at normal to high temperatures. They are not affected by thermal expansion the way solid wedges are. Now, let's move to the second classification, types of body and bonnet joints. This classification is based on how the valve body is connected to its top part, called the bonnet. Screwed bonnet. This is the most basic design. It is used in low-cost valves where high pressure or temperature is not a concern. Bolted bonnet. This is the most commonly used design. A gasket is used between the body and the bonnet to ensure tight sealing. This design is easy to disassemble for maintenance. Welded bonnet. This type is used when there is no need to open the valve for maintenance. It is lighter in weight and provides a permanent seal. Pressure seal bonnet. This design is used for high pressure and high temperature services. The higher the pressure inside the valve, the tighter the seal becomes. Now, we come to the third classification, types of stem movement. This classification is about how the valve stem moves when the valve is operated. Rising stem or OS and Y type. OS and Y stands for outside stem and yoke. In this type, the stem moves up when the valve is opened and moves down when closed. The threaded part of the stem is outside the fluid flow, which prevents it from getting corroded or damaged. You can easily know whether the valve is open or closed just by looking at the position of the stem. Non-rising stem or inside screw type. In this type, the stem does not move up or down. Instead, the disc moves along the threads of the stem inside the valve. The stem threads are in direct contact with the flow medium. That's why this type is suitable for places where vertical space is limited and the fluid does not damage the stem material. To summarize, gate valves can be classified based on disc type, body bonnet connection, and stem movement. Each type has its own use depending on the pressure, temperature, and space availability in a piping system. Understanding these types helps engineers choose the right valve for the right application. Thank you for watching this video. For more detailed content on valves, piping systems, and plant engineering, make sure to visit EPC Land. And if you found this explanation helpful, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more such technical videos. Welcome to this session by EPC Land. In today's video, we will discuss a very important topic in the world of valves, applications, advantages, and disadvantages of gate valves. Whether you're just starting your journey in piping engineering or looking to build a solid foundation, this explanation is designed for you. Let's begin with the most basic question. Were gate valves used? Gate valves are one of the most widely used types of valves in industrial piping systems. Their primary function is to either fully open or fully close the flow of fluid. In other words, they act like a switch for fluids in pipelines. Because of their design, gate valves offer very low resistance to flow when fully open. This makes them a popular choice in many different services. You will find gate valves in a variety of fluid systems, such as airlines, fuel gas systems, steam lines, feed water systems, lube oil pipelines, and various hydrocarbon services. Essentially, almost any process system that requires a tight shut-off mechanism can use gate valves. There are even special types of gate valves for handling more challenging materials like slurry and powdered products. One such example is the knife gate valve, which is specially designed to cut through thick or viscous media like slurry, pulp, or powders. Now let's talk about the advantages of gate valves. First, 
gate walls provide a very tight seal when fully closed, making them ideal for isolation purposes. Second, they offer very low pressure drop during operation because the disc completely moves out of the way, allowing fluid to pass through with minimal resistance. Third, most gate walls are bidirectional, which means they can be installed in either direction and still function properly. Fourth, they are well suited for high pressure and high temperature applications, which is why they are commonly used in power plants, oil refineries, and chemical industries. And finally, gate walls generally require less maintenance over long periods, especially when used properly in full open or full closed positions. However, like all mechanical components, gate walls also have their disadvantages. The most important limitation is that gate walls cannot be used to regulate or control flow. They are only suitable for open or shut operations. If you try to use them partially open to control flow, it can result in erosion of the disc and seats. Also, gate walls are slow in operation. Turning the hand wheel takes time to move the gate all the way up or down. This slow action is actually a benefit in some cases as it reduces the chances of water hammer, but it can be a drawback when quick shutoff is needed. Another disadvantage is that when a gate valve is partially open, it may produce vibration and noise which can be damaging over time. And finally, when it comes to maintenance or repair, gate valves can be more difficult to service, especially when it comes to lapping or grinding of the seats due to limited access to the internal components. So, in summary, gate valves are great for full open and full shutoff services and they perform best when used in systems where minimal pressure drop is required and flow control is not a major concern. However, they are not suitable for throttling purposes and can be difficult to repair once damaged. That brings us to the end of this session. If you found this explanation helpful and if you want to learn more about valves, piping layouts and process systems, then do explore the detailed courses available on EPC land. These courses cover everything from basics to advanced topics in piping engineering with over 150 hours of recorded content. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss a new update. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.